You know that game, right? I'm sure you do. Almost everywhere I look, I can see people talking about it and laughing. But it was no joke. It was real. My name is Mike Schmidt. And yes, I am the main character of that game. I'm not as real as you define it, but I do live a life. That sick game is what I had to put up with for a whole month. Those first five nights were structured after my first five nights. But you don't take it in while playing the game the way I did. My time there was hell. You hit 6 a.m. and win the level. It restarts. I hit 6 a.m. The doors slam shut. And I can't leave until the next night. It was day for everybody outside. It was always night for me. Those monsters scratched on my walls and made the worst noises while I waited. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't eat or drink. And it was on night five when it hit me the hardest. After not getting any sleep, I I tried to listen to the monsters. In the end, I got something that I wish I didn't. It was within the moans of the monsters. Help me. Save me. Stop me. Kill me. Over and over and over. All it could say was those lines under the noise of their moaning. Night 10. Bonnie starts crying, why, and God help me. She was joined not long after. Stop me, creaked Chica. Kill me, creaked Foxy. Help us, creaked Freddy. Run from us, creaked Bonnie. It was an ongoing thing until night 23. I was so lost in my head. Sometimes I see Golden Freddy. He'll stay for short times and long times. Sometimes he'll leave me things. (laughs) Last few times he gave me a gun. Some bullets. Some paper and a pen. He wanted me to kill myself. I was so lost, I couldn't think straight enough to do much of anything outside of habit. The next night, Golden Freddy gave me another gun. A few nights later, I took all the guns, tore them apart, and smashed them into my flesh. And by night 29, I let them in. By night 29, they took me in as one of their own. Night 29, Golden Freddy wanted me gone. Night 29, he met me after the morning chimes. He said little, but he said enough. You are in my world. You are my puppet. You will not play against my games. You will die. You cannot save them. Night 30, they all met me in my room. They all sat down and moaned. Freddy talked almost like a regular human being. 
He spoke to me and told me about Golden Freddy. Told me that the Bite of 87 was a cover-up. Told me that Golden Freddy is a demon who keeps them trapped inside the machines, forever to kill and trap more souls for his power. I felt so bad for them. There were kids trapped inside machines, killed by the demon. They closed the place down and he took over. Created his own world within and used us. Freddy cried in pain, telling us to free them, that only a living soul could do anything. The machines were slaves to Golden Freddy, so they had to do what he said. One rule was to never turn on the daytime power. Since I was considered safe from the rules of the game, they told me I could go in and do it. And with that, I hatched my plan. Night 31, I made sure I told the others. Night 32, the metal poison took effect. I wasn't dying slow. Night 33, I made a deal with Golden Freddy. If I could beat him at his own game, he would have to let the children go. And heal me. He took it. He swore. And he messed up. And by night 34, I died from metal poison in my blood. Night 35, a new guard was to come in. To take a new soul for the game. That's part of the plan. We made a new hand for Foxy that he could control. I used his hand to write a note to the new guard on his first night. Thank goodness he could read it. This is all a game. You must get out. Turn on the power to see another day. He reluctantly took action on his third night. He knew something was wrong and that fox he was trying to help. He ran for it. The machines spun into Golden Freddy's control. Bonnie was first on him and took a bad bite into his right shoulder. He twisted out of Bonnie's jaw. Bonnie fell silent. It was sad, but in the end, this would all be worth it. Chica attacked him when he entered the main room. She was quicker than all of them, even Foxy, and tackled him. He took his limp arm and shoved it down Chica's throat. She bit it off. She took it as the guard's death. She fell silent. His blood was spilling everywhere, and yet he charged on. Freddy took action next. He stopped him in front of the power room. I channeled Foxy's arm so that Foxy would run into Freddy and push him over. The man ran into the power room. He was about to die, but with his final burst of power, he jumped and hit the green button and restarted the power and turned it all on. It was over. I'm dead. He's dead. Bonnie, Chica, they're dead. Freddy and Foxy are lying on the floor, and I don't know what Golden Freddy's going to do. But the power's on, and the game was over. Golden Freddy approached me. He told me that a deal was a deal. The game was over. Day 38, the sun came up for once. The children stuck inside the suits had become adults. They were in there for so long. I was given life and the new guard was dead because he wasn't part of the deal. But we were free. Foxy's name was John. Chica was Rachel, Freddy was Fred, and Bonnie was Randy. Bonnie was a girl who got teased for being a girl in school. They had all forgotten what it was like to live and only knew pain. I was still 
insane, but in time we all grew normal again. So now you know our pain, and you know that we are reminded of it constantly. We live together in one house. John dresses up as a pirate for kids' birthday parties. Rachel cooks for an Italian restaurant. The best pizza ever, ladies and gentlemen. Fred and Randy, though, are... aimless. Looking for something. I watch you. I keep you safe from the demons in your world. I watch you on a camera. I press buttons and save your life. Some I cannot save, and others I do. Ever wondered why sometimes you forget what you were doing? You're welcome. <laughs>